Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave. It's Gem here and today we are going to carry on from some of our previous videos and we're going to have another bash with the pan pastels. I did say in the last video that I would quite like to try more of a portrait idea, maybe with a little bit more detail in it. So before we have to pack some more of the cave up, I thought we'd get the pan pastels out one last time and then I can pack them in a box. So we shall have to see how this is going to go today. A little bit of trepidation because pastel is definitely not a medium I I'm overly familiar with. Just before we get started, the cave stash has been updated over on eBay and so has the website as well. The links for both of those are down in the description if you fancy a gander. That's all done and dusted, so let's get to top down view and we can get going. It is a beautifully disgusting day outside. It's really stormy and wet and windy. So although it looks very bright here in the cave, it's because I've got the place lit up like a football stadium. You can just see the shadows of my hands. So I've got light from here, light from here and light from here. Oh, I hate winter for this. Right, just before we get started, there are a few things that I want to show you. I'm working in pastels. Some of you may remember from a recent haul video that I got some pastel mat from Santa. So we are going to be using that today. And uh, there are a variety of colors to choose from, which is always lovely, jubbly indeed. The other thing that I have got is I bought myself one of these um, pan pastel palette trays. Oh, look at all the lights now. It's like a bloody disco in here. <laughs> Ooh. As the desk set up is, I don't really have space for this, so I don't know if I'm going to use it today, but I just wanted to show you that anyway. And I also have what I now call my little basket of disasters, which is all my um, all my pastel stuff. So the first thing I want to do is pick out some colours, and I've decided today that what I'm going to try and do is a stag's head or a deer head. Uh, I think that's probably very, very over ambitious. However, you know me, I'm not scared. So I was thinking of like maybe like a snowy stormy background it kind of like suits the mood today so yellow is definitely not the choice of paper that we want I was thinking maybe this light grey colour because it's almost close to the colour of the sky outside just now or maybe even I'm sure there's a darker grey yeah that might be too dark I think let's go dark grey I might as well let's be brave the te I cannot describe the texture of this to you. It's like really fine sandpaper, but not. And this paper is so high quality. I can't even call it paper. Okay, I'm a wee bit scared. <laughs> so thinking about colours then, I've got all my pan pastels here and we're going to have to pick out some, some suitable colours. Now I do have rather a large number of deer on the farm and that is the current farm. We will not have deer, at, well we would have farmed deer at our new place. So I've taken a couple of photographs, so I'm working from like several reference images. So I'm just trying to think about the types of colours that I'm going to need or maybe what I don't need. So white's going to be a yes, definitely not green. This grey looks quite close to the paper. It's a little bit lighter, so we might be able to use that to our advantage for some blending. I also don't think I'm going to need sparkly pink somehow. Yeah, these are all the bright colours. I'm not going to need these. I'm going to ease myself in gently here. So I've got the grey that's almost the same colour as the paper. And I just want to see what we're, what we're getting with this. This grey is standing out a lot on the camera. And I had this last time when I did the other ones. It's not as stark on the, like, you know, to the naked eye as it is on the paper. I have a feeling that with the texture of this paper, it's going to tear up these sponges really quickly. And I might be completely wrong, I don't know, but that's the kind of feeling I get. I have to say, a tiny amount of this pastel seems to go rather a long way. Can you see these little bits on the paper? That is bits of my sponge coming off. I don't want to take too much time deliberating over this background. But by the same token, I don't want it to be terrible. <laughs> There's some areas that just don't want to seem to blend. Well, don't want. Don't. There's some areas that don't seem to want to blend at all, which is kind of weird. Okay, I think that's enough for the background, if I'm honest. Put all my blues away just to give myself a bit more uh, space. That's me, I'm only using a bajillion pastels now instead of two bajillion. I could actually put these in here now. 
Okay, I just wanted to zoom out to show you this now. This is the, the sort of palette thing. I don't know if this is going to make my life any easier. Uh, as I say, it's more a space issue for me than anything else right now, which will be rectified <coughs> after the move. So I'm just going to keep this off to my left. Obviously, I'm left-handed, so that would make sense. I quite like this pointy tool and one of these kind of arch shaped ones as well that worked quite well for me last time too I've got these little sort of they look like eyeshadow applicators so I'm gonna get one of those out too okay so the first thing I want to do is sort of map out where I want everything and this for me is like the most difficult bit because although I have been arting for a while now I have no confidence in myself for this kind of thing oh I don't want to do it just do it do it We're going to have an ear there, so white here. Well, it's technically it's not white, but this is where the eye socket's going to go. For anybody that's interested, this is a, it's a red deer, a Scottish red deer. You can tell that I'm really nervous about this because I'm like, I'm struggling to talk while I'm doing this. Does it look like a deer yet? And then there's a little bit of white that comes up here as well. And then we want the other ear and I want it at roughly the same angle as that one. What's this ear? Ah! I know I'm not funny. I don't know why I'm so nervous about this. It's like because pastel in itself is probably one of the more forgiving mediums in terms of making mistakes. <laughs> so I don't know, I really don't know why I've got my panic on so much but I think it's just because I like of the, the just the sheer lack of experience and trying something like this probably isn't the best place to start. I mean I'm I'm under no illusions. This is this picture is not going to turn out anything like what I've got in my head. And I think I'm quite sort of prepared to accept that. And I think that's kind of part of it. <laughs> um but I think that by doing this I'll probably learn quite a lot. Sometimes it's good to make mistakes because that is how, well, it's certainly how I learn because I'm, because I'm a kind of hands-on learner, it seems to, seems to work quite well for me for some reason. Now, my thing is that I'm wondering whether I should actually just be using this entirely for the face because in amongst the hair, you usually see patches of the paler hair poking through, especially if the animal is wet, which obviously happens a fair amount in Scotland. And given that this is a Scottish deer, does it look like a deer yet? <laughs> I, I really hope that you can't hear that weather outside because it is absolutely horrendous. As we would say in Scotland, it's blowing a hoolie, which means it's, it's really, really windy. Okay, so back to this pointy tool. And again, I just want to try and kind of Oh, that is so dark. Oh, no. If I can just map out where things are supposed to be going, then that's going to make my life a lot easier. So I've realised I'm really, like, squint here. I'm still trying to think in layers here, but I have to admit I'm finding it very, very difficult to sort of get my brain to engage that that kind of idea. So I'm just trying to kind of focus on like colour placement just now, the main shapes in, and then I can, you know, I can worry about the rest of this later on, so. And really, they, well, the hair's starting from like here. Like this. And then it all kind of like the hair comes to a point down the front of their chest. So obviously that's not all going to fit in, but I kind of want to allude to that. See, now this to me feels like painting and this is the bit that I'm comfortable with. Now you must be wondering why I'm so far down the paper, but so I can get his antlers in because they are going to take up a considerable amount of space. And then a teeny weeny wee bit down here as well. Love how I'm like talking to myself but I'm pretending I'm talking to you guys. Now I really just need to decide where I'm putting his eyes. 
and this is always the tough part because this is the bit where it can go really really wrong got a bit of the old eyelash going on as well there ah! this is nerve-wracking what is wrong with me Okay, I'm quite happy with the with the eye placement. I'm not happy with the shape and things, but that's something that I can work on later. Now, if I can just get the antlers in. I wonder if I can erase off of this stuff because I've dropped a whole load of this black pigment. Oh, okay. It just kind of shoves it around a little bit. <laughs> Oh wow, I can honestly, I can tell you already that pastels, this is just not my thing. Do you know that? It's really, really not. Generally, their antlers are usually quite symmetrical. So again, if I can just get the, the basic line to begin with, then I can kind of build it up and thicken it up. I think this is the part that I'm most concerned about. Reasonably symmetrical antlers. Maybe we'll give him an extra prong on one side just to make him a bit more interesting. These just look like the branches that I normally draw, <laughs> draw when I'm drawing trees. <laughs> ah! Oh no! Right, okay, 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 that's that's quite enough of that. Okay, so I've got like a kind of skin tone colour here and I'm just going to pop this all in the middle. Uh, I'm going to go over it with some of the darker browns but as I say, this this will actually show through Right, I think I'm going to try and blend this out a little bit. I've got to remember as well that there is some of this kind of like dark indigo colour underneath, which will absolutely not be helping matters right now. Oh no, I've still got to fill his nose in as well. Oh no. Again, I think maybe some of this colour might be better. Okay, that looks a bit more like a del like a, a deliberate stroke. And again, I've kind of like got a short memory. I did um, I did talk about this in the last video as well, and it's like you have to have like conviction in your strokes, and sometimes you just have to like go for it. There's oh balls it up already, and things tend to turn out better when you just kind of like go for it. Oh no. Okay, this is what I was scared of happening, and I have actually gone through with my pointy sponge. So that pointy sponge is now dead. I know there's a few of you out there that do actually work with pastels and more specifically pan pastels and I salute you because I do not have the patience for this shiz. They do look a bit a more antler-esque though, don't they? And we need to build up the thickness at the bottom here where they join onto his head. That's more like it. I have got visions of me still sitting here at 12 o'clock tonight just like doing these tiny little delicate strokes trying to finish this off. Oh, I could be here for some time. It's funny because deer antlers are something that I look at more or less on a daily basis. And I've said this about a couple of things now as well, but see when it comes to actually drawing or painting them, all of a sudden it's like you've never seen them before. I'm still a huge advocate for this pointy tool. Like pointy tool is everything. For those of you that do work in pastels, please answer me this question. Am I supposed to have this paper taped down? Um, uh, I feel as if I should, but at the same time, I feel as if it would restrict me quite a lot. So I kind of don't want to. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him with his slightly wonky antler on that side. I don't want to make this any worse than it already is. The other thing that I've noticed as well is that holding these little palette knives puts a huge amount of strain on my hand injury and I can feel it. I'm probably gripping too tight because I'm because I'm concentrating and I'm, you know I'm a little bit apprehensive at what I'm doing but I can feel it in my hand. Oh that ear's looking a bit wonky isn't it? I need to put more in here. Ooh. And then he's got a little bit that kind of comes down here. I've just got some brown now and I'm just starting to add in a wee bit more. And this is the part that I'm a little bit more um, comfortable with because it's colour. I'm a lot better with things like this than I am with trying to draw something that's a sponge. <laughs> This is, this is like the fun part for me now that like I'm much more relaxed already. I've decided that I'm going to finish his eyes in 
pencil like a black either a black charcoal pencil or a black pastel pencil because I need a bit more precision and I need to make them larger as well so I want to do that on top once I've finished everything else I say I say that really confidently as if yeah I totally know what I'm doing I don't have a clue what I'm doing I am literally just making this up as I go along I feel like I just want to work on this top half of his face first and just get it like the way I want it that would be that would be quite nice so what we have to do is we have to fix his antlers because their antlers are not usually all the one colour. So if I smudge in a bit of everything else. Now there we go, I can put some of that down over the top and it's not um it's not like blending like crazy with with what's there. It is sort of, but in a good way. And you tend to find that at the tips their antlers are actually really pale. Sometimes they even go to like white. I think I'm going to put a lighter shade on because I think that might just finish that off quite nicely. I've got this kind of pale lemony yellow and I think it might be too pale but we're going to try anyway and I'm going to use one of these little, um, I was going to say eyelash applicators, yeah very good gem, eyeshadow applicators. Oh dear, I see that's me, I'm sober. See that just might be too much. However, 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 I should be able to blend this. Oh no, that's working quite well. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I got myself a little bit excited there. I think one of the things about pastel as well though, although it blends really well together, I kind of don't want to like over blend it because there's something really nice about all the the actual like pastel strokes. And I do, I do like to blend things, like I really do. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a bit of work darkening his head down just up at this very top part because that is a very obvious line where I have sort of drawn it in, if you know what I mean. She says five minutes after saying, I don't want to blend it out too much. Yeah, it's a bit wonky. It has got slightly wonky antlers, so yeah, okay. And I just want to, I think I want to bring some more of this. Oh crap, that's the wrong brown. Some of this darker brown down this middle section here. See, I'm back to this now. I've got this overwhelming urge to just get the pastel pencils out and, and do it with pastel pencils because that's like my catch-all. If I can go back to pencil, everything's fine. And I'm trying really hard to resist that temptation because that's kind of not what we're, what we're about here. Or we're trying not to be about. <laughs> I need to put some more... Um, his ears aren't actually joined to his head, which is slightly alarming. There we go, that's better. I've just picked up the wrong colour crap. I was too busy, I was too busy looking up at the monitor there. It is a wonder how I actually managed to conduct any sort of filming whatsoever when I can't even coordinate myself. Right, I f I, do you know what I'm feeling? I am feeling that these ears are too small. Not that it's a, well, a, yeah, it's a mistake. Yeah, that one looks better already. They're too sort of long and skinny. And I am just literally steamroll, <laughs> easy for me to say. I'm literally just steamrolling over the top of what I've done. Which I don't know whether that's, again, I don't, I don't know whether that's um, pastel etiquette or not. That's better already. Yeah. So I have the contours of the, this face area to worry about now. And again, I, I feel like this is a part where I might benefit from using some pastel pencil but I want to try and get the bulk of the the contours of the face sorted out with with the pastel because 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 I, really ideally what I want right now is like one tone down from the shade that I'm using which is something I just don't have and I'm actually tempted to use the gray so I'm going to I'm going to try well that was a good choice can I, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Can you see the difference what, that I'm talking about here? Where I've smoothed out round the top here and then underneath I've just popped a little bit of this grey in, like in here. And it just helps give that like a little bit more contouring, I suppose you want to call it. Again, don't know if that's an actual technical term in pastel work, but it is now. So I'm going to try and emulate that on this side without damaging too much of what I've done with the eye. And I am at some point going to have to deal with this nose situation, so it might as well be now. This is not what a deer's nose looks like, but we're going to fix it. It'll be fine. 
And then they've got, most animals have this, well, most hairy mammals have this. They've got this little V of hair that sits at the top of their noses. If you've got dogs or cats, look at your dog and cat's nose, I can guarantee that they will have this. It's just basically where the, their, their hair meets the, their nose. And there's always this funny little kind of sprout of hair. I find it quite amusing. I would definitely say, unless you're working in like a massive size, you know, if you're working on a huge canvas, adding in details like this is really, really difficult. I am finding it somewhat challenging. Again, I don't, I don't know why I'm like, I'm always like striving for like absolute precision. And this is quite a loose medium most of the time. And I think I really need to try and like break away from that. But I'm just so used to the precision of pencil. And that's kind of, you know, what, what I think everything should be. And it's really, really not the case. He does have a really squint nose. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this, this really sort of ready colour. And I just want to start adding in. A little bit more up here. I'm not convinced about this texture idea for this hair at all. I need to take this chin in a bit as well. He's got a massive chin. Yeah, I'm gonna. F I, don't, I don't. Do you know what the problem is with his nose? I don't know what color I should be using. I'm just gonna start chucking stuff down and see what happens because otherwise I just feel as if I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna get there with it. But it's such a small space I'm working in now. That's like, I don't really know what to do with this anymore. If I blend it together too much, it's going to end up really muddy. And that's what I don't want. So I've just picked up another brown now. And again, I'm, I'm really more just like trying to give the impression of his, his mane rather than actually, you know, having it in there because it is kind of not, not the focal point of the picture. It's funny that I've chosen to, to do this knowing that hair textures are probably one of the hardest things <laughs> to learn to do in most mediums and hears me like, oh yeah, this is like the second time in my life I've ever done anything in pasta. Let's do some deer hair. That's a great idea. Well done, Gem. I think I might be quite satisfied. Oh, can you imagine? I want to take a little bit more of this kind of iron oxide color. Uh, you normally wouldn't see this much red, even in a red deer. Uh, but it's kind of fun. <laughs> That's why I'm doing it, because it's fun. He's a fun chap. I am going to retrieve my black pastel pencil in the hope that this works. I was thinking that a charcoal pencil would probably be better, but I'll be truthful, I have no idea where my charcoal pencils are. Uh, so I think they might be in a box already. Right, so let's see what I can do with his eyes. I do want them to be slightly bigger. And this one's kind of the wrong shape, but I don't know, I'm hoping this pencil, oh yes. This is exactly what I was after. Yes, look, look at just that tiny little bit of definition. Look how much of a difference that makes to this picture. That is insane. For anyone that's interested, it's uh, Faber-Castell Pit Pastel pencils that I'm using. I like them very much and uh, I, do, I do use them the, a lot just for it's usually just for touching things up i don't actually do a lot of work in pastel pencil its eyes are still a little bit lopsided this the, the shape down here is not quite right okay it's not perfect but i think i'm going to take that as a win i really want to stick a highlight in his eyeball and i think that might ruin it as well i'm just so scared to ruin this now because I, this has been painful for me is that going to go down there probably not i've got nothing to <laughs> Come on. Come on, gel pen. I know you don't like things like pastel. Pastel's nasty for gel pen. That's like asking. There we go. Oh, that's just perfect. Okay, guys, I would love to know what you think of this. I am a lot more impressed than I thought I would be with myself, I'll be honest. Um, so that's quite nice. <laughs> um, I'm just going to sign this down here, I think. I'll just pop my name down in the corner here, eh? Do it with pencils, seen as I've got one. Don't really fancy doing it with the pan pastels. Okay, guys, that is it for today. I am so relieved that that is over. <laughs> 
I am now going to pack the pastels up. I have uh, no more use for them until after we've moved. The next video I'm going to do with pan pastels is I'm going to do a colouring page. So for those of you that are colourists that are quite interested in pan pastels, uh, I will be tackling probably a full image, but it will be quite a simple image for obvious reasons. So you can look forward to that. It will probably be into the spring by the time we get moved and everything. But I just want to let you know that that is definitely coming. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed yourself today. I enjoyed myself eventually and we will see you next time for another video back in the cave. Have a great day everyone and bye for now.